And not all centers are equal. As I said, there's a hierarchy of centers. Some centers are more important, again, like the levels of government. And in the Casey readings, the great centers are the lumbar axis, particularly the fourth lumbar, the ninth dorsal, or the ninth thoracic. Now we call it thoracic. Back then it was the dorsal, as related to the sympathetic. These are the great centers, save the vagus itself. The vagus is that vagus pneumogastric, and that tended to be more in the cervical or upper thoracic area up here. So he said you've got these three great centers, fourth lumbar, ninth dorsal, third cervical. If we want to simplify it, that's more often than not what he said. These are the great centers from which the cerebral spinal and sympathetic coordinate. He also called these the coordinating centers. So these are really important. And the significance of this, I, when I uh, looked, looked in the literature, I found an article by uh, Irvin Kaur, who is considered the most famous osteopathic uh, researcher of all time. And he had an illustration that showed the spine with the parasympathetic ganglia leading with the innervation of the organs. And on the spine, he had circles. And the circles were at, in the cervical area, the superior cervical ganglion, about the ninth, tenth thoracic, and about the fourth lumbar. And then the caption underneath said, where we've circled this, there are enlarged or fused ganglia in these sympathetic chain. So you think about these little balls of nerve tissue along the spine that you're massaging with your paraspinal massage. They're not all equal. There's certain areas where there's balls of nerve tissue there. There's little brains. And those are the coordinating centers, and this is what Casey is referring to. It's, isn't that interesting? And he actually refers to them sometimes, where they're, they're enlarged ganglia at certain centers. The osteopaths are aware of that, and that's part of their... The coordinating between the cerebral spinal and sympathetic are happening more often than not in these centers. Isn't that interesting? He also says, uh, well, I'll come into a minute, that's how the soul connects to the body. Let me come back to that, but uh, hold, that, hold that thought. Okay, that is what's meant by keeping a coordination between the plexus of one ganglia or center and the other, which is an attunement is another way of thinking about this coordination. Harmony, coordination, attunement. He said you'll know these centers are coordinated when they're all operating at the same pulsation, vibration. They can coordinate one with another. And this is the reading where he, the neural kilometer that you may have heard of, I think they're maybe using it up there. He actually, in this reading, he said, they said, well, how do you know if they coordinate? He said, use this neural kilometer that the chiropractors invented and it'll help you know when the centers are coordinated, when they're operating at the same level of vibration and pulsation. Because just imagine, what if they're not operating at the same level of pulsation and vibration? If one of these centers is operating with a gas pedal to the floor and the other one's sort of laying back and saying, you know, uh, I don't think I'll operate. It's a, I think I'll take it easy today. Well, the organ systems that the centers are coordinating one part of the body might be out of coordination with another. Could you see how a lack of coordination there if these centers aren't all operating at the same level of intensity, if you think of it that way. So you find the Casey readings, he says when you make these adjustments, make the adjustment and then coordinate to make sure the centers are all operating at the same level. Particularly if you have a tendency just to treat the same center over and over, like the early chiropractors would treat the cervical area, the hole in one as Palmer called it. He said, well, you may make the correction, but you're stimulating those centers. Every time you just keep doing that, and that part of the body is going to be operating, the upper part of the organs here that's innervated from those centers are going to be operating at a higher level of intensity of stimulation than the other organs. So you're, in a sense, you're throwing the system a little bit out of coordination just by making that treatment over and over to that one area. He said, whereas the osteopaths tend, they make the correction, and then they coordinate and not just assume that the body is going to coordinate itself, but go ahead and make the coordination as part of the treatment at the end of the treatment to make sure all the centers are at the same vibration, the same pulsation. And there's, how do they do that? Either by gentle inhibition, you see, or a gentle stimulation with this paraspinal massage. That's how you coordinate so that they're all operating at the same level. Those are the sort of things you all do in your massage, if you're aware of it or not. That's what that paraspinal massage is. Now here's a reading. Um, where he's talking about how to do that coordination we just talked about, a gentle massage following a violet ray treatment. He said uh, these areas where the cerebral spinal and sympathetic coordinate in the larger form of the ganglia. So when Irvin Kaur drew the little circles around where these ganglia were enlarged, here's Casey saying where these larger ganglia are along the spine in the, upper, in the superior cervical ganglion, 1, 2, and 3, C1, 2, and 3, that's the superior cervical ganglion of the sympathetic, and the upper thoracic, which is there's your brachial plexus, okay, 
the ninth dorsal, that's the solar plexus brain, which he often called that the solar plexus center, and the lumbar axis, and even the coccyx, the tailbone, which we're going to come back to later on is how important the coccyx center is. So these are, these are uh, all centers that, by this massage, this paraspinal massage, the circular rotary massage down the spine, he said you can coordinate those centers using that. I, I can show you almost the exact same language in some of the old osteopathic text, where they're doing their osteopathic massage, and, and they're saying, here's how you coordinate the cerebral spinal sympathetic. Little John, one of the famous early osteopaths, is really clear about this. This is how you coordinate those two great nervous systems. This is the same reading, 3075. Later they get said, should the massage be osteopathic or could it be given by someone other than an osteopath? In case he says, anyone who understands the anatomical structure of the body, that's what I'm trying to explain to you today, by the way, a little bit, in knowing how to coordinate the sympathetic and cerebral spinal systems in the area indicated. So if you know where these centers are, and he's, he gave this kind of a quote in several readings where he said a nurse could do it, a massage, a masseuse could do it. If they know where the centers are and can do this treatment, you don't necessarily have to be an osteopath. Now, you do need to be an osteopath or chiropractor to make adjustments. That's something different. That's different, and that out, falls outside the scope of what we're talking about. But we're just talking about how do you coordinate these two great nervous systems of the body, which are associated with the conscious mind and the unconscious mind, which are coordinated with the superficial and a deep circulation. Can you see the importance of coordinating these systems? You coordinate it with this mas gentle massage along the spine, coordinate the system. Now this is, three, this is again the same reading, 3075-1. He said these are not merely to be punched or pressed, so we're not talking about high velocity popping and cracking or anything violent. He said while these ganglia, they're very small, but just the gentle circular massage is needed. And at times you can use the structural parts of the body. Now it's getting more toward osteopathy where you actually, when you're massaging along the spine, you take the arm and use it as a lever. Have you seen Dr. Nelson do this type of technique in his demonstrations? It's gentle. You're just putting the arm through the range of motion and, you're, and you can hold on the center or do a, a, a rotary massage on each vertebra as you come down. That's what we're talking about, using the arm or the legs. The same thing, you can use the legs as levers. Very, it's a gentle thing though. It's not high velocity. Uh, but then you're getting in a little bit uh, deeper level of manual therapy than just the, the gentle massage. You're actually almost getting a point in there. You can start making corrections at that level, gentle correct corrections. We'll talk about the different forms of pathology here in a moment. 